at uh, a number of conferences with us and I met him the first time maybe close to 15 years ago at Paul's company and, and he, he was there with uh, uh, his longtime friend and partner uh, Norm and they had a prototype machine that, or proof of concept kind of machine that they put together which is uh, essentially kind of like a small version of the Ferris wheel motor there or some of the other Bedini motors where it was a, one of these pulsed coil setups but using air cores and um, he had the battery bank, and the and the goal is to you know run, make mechanical power, generate power, have it recharge its own batteries, which is kind of a common theme. And uh, you know the batteries have chemistry that can kind of translate what's going on into uh, allowing themselves to be recharged. And you know Bedini's been over this a million times. Um, he called it a, a RPG, reactive power generator, and he has gone through numerous variations of the machine and has constantly evolved it over the last X number of years. He's been working with uh, Paul Babcock, um, and as many of you know, he has uh, mastered various switching circuits and methodologies, you know, plus his longtime background being very open-minded to er uh, everything in his field. He has a lot of experience that he had helped uh, Mike and Norm with, and little by little by little, this started to evolve, and uh, Mike had shown, uh, shown this motor at a couple of the conferences that we had at the uh, Hayden's uh, Eagles Lodge uh, a few years ago. And uh, last year, he, he uh, also did a presentation, I think that was maybe part two, uh, to the series to kind of update and let everybody know where he's going with this. But last year, he showed a Renaissance motor, which is something that was, uh, that one was developed by Norm uh, way back, which has uh, some interesting principles that he went over. And these presentations are all available on uh, emediapress.com if you search Mike's name. And so in the last year, year and a half, something like that, they've been evolving this to the point where little by little by little they're going up higher and higher in voltage and of, of course the higher you go in voltage any loss that you're having becomes a smaller percentage of that as a whole you know if you have two volt loss on a 12 volt battery that's quite a chunk out of that 12 volts uh, but if you have you know 72 volts or something like that it's almost insignificant and so what you're going to see is um, more evidence that uh, a lot of what uh, many of us have been saying over the years is is true. I've seen some of these demos. Uh, unfortunately, he wasn't able to bring the demonstration model with him um, uh, this weekend, but he's going to continue to release updates, and the goal is eventually to move in the direction of being able to make this type of uh, uh, technology um, available to everybody. So please help me welcome Mike Clark. Is Mike whole purpose in starting this, to build this motor, this reactive power generator, is the whole motivation. Because I feel like there's a, a better way, a cleaner way, and a way that we own our own power. And when we own our own power, all of a sudden, the power company isn't nosing into our personal affairs. Because you all realize, right, that that smart meter they got on your house can tell them everything that you're using. And when they do that, they sell that information. I read a report that the power companies are making as much or more money selling our information to advertisers than they do selling us power. And yet, the, grid's, the grid doesn't get improved and our power rates keep climbing. <clears throat> and so, we want to be able to get away from that. But the, one of the points I wanted to make about talking about my, my, grand, my uncle's farm was maybe we need, as a, as a people, is to reduce and simplify. And even if we don't, we can make power systems big enough to go on a home that will take care of that. Alternative home-based power. So, this is a customer of mine. These are powers. There was another company who put these panels on, on his place, but he put them in the wrong direction. They don't work good facing north. <laughs> and we put in another, another set of panels, almost as many panels. And this is awesome. So he, what he's done is he's locked in his power prices. So Idaho, he doesn't get a bill from Idaho Power anymore. He, gets, he pays a 
$5 a month meter fee for the, the net meter that he has. But he's locked in his power prices. So he's not having to pay the increases and all that kind of thing. But the only problem is, is he didn't put in a backup battery. So when the grid goes down, he's still without power. He needs to put in a backup battery of some kind. I have a friend, his name's Monty Stiles, he used to be a, a federal prosecutor, and he, he's since retired and he loves to take pictures. Monty came out to our place and, and uh, we, have, we live in an area where there's lots of fossils and you know, there's opals and stuff, and he says, oh, take me out there, take me out there. Of course, we didn't find any fossils, and we didn't find any opals, but he's gathering up these Mormon crickets. <laughs> and so he does this picture, and uh, he sends me this picture of climbing Mount Idaho, and uh, <laughs> he's doing this kind of stuff all the time. But I put this in climbing Mount Idaho because we have a mountain to climb. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a mountain to climb. And we talk about organizing the mouse army. We need to do that. Not like lemmings, where we just blindly follow, but we need to be going ahead and moving forward in this direction, and the more, the pe the more we do it, the more we move out there, the more people that get involved, those capillaries going out, the more we change the, the, the way things are done in this country. <clears throat> this motor, with the way this is designed, is it makes a lot of noise. It's a, it's a junior grade air raid siren. And seeing this, this right here is the uh, T-Gen. Paul, Paul supplied that. And of course, here's our flip-flop circuit here that flips the batteries. And this, this right here, just in case you're wondering, that just, we use that to tension the, the belt that moves this, this plate back and forward so we can tension the belt. And of course, here's our Here's our battery banks, bank A and bank B. And so, <clears throat> we've gotten that thing now so that if I don't, with, without a load, I can get that thing running well over 3,000 RPM until my head explodes from the noise. So now, what's the motor doing? Now a lot of you have seen that motor. We've had it, we've had it up here a couple of times. And, and you've seen it and heard it run. So this is from the data logger. So let me just explain some. That purple line that you see right there, that's the frequency of the generator. This yellow line right here, these yellow, that's when the battery, that's the battery switching. The red and green line is the battery voltages from those two battery banks. And these two, the light and dark blue lines, have to do with the AC power that we're outputting from the, from the T-Gen. We ran these things for eight hours. You see any difference in those lines? There is no difference. Look at the power output is the same. We're running 160 watts of lights while we're doing this. Battery voltage never goes down. I want you to tell me when can you take a lead-acid battery with a 30-amp draw on it for, for eight hours and not have that line just drop like a stone? So what's the future look like? The future looks like this. This is what's sitting on Paul's bench with the magnets and everything and the coils around it and so on. We'll be able to produce this quite easily and quite rapidly, and it's going to work way better. All that noise you heard, heard from that other motor, it's going to be gone. It won't be there. That, all that air resistance. Because one of the things about that motor is, is that we're, we're sucking air in, compressing it, and spitting it back out. It takes a lot of energy to do that. It takes, a lot of, it, take, it takes quite a few amps from our system to do that. But even at that, we're still on the positive side. We're still producing more back than what we're putting out. This will be the next generation. See, if you look at this closely, you can see there's a pattern in the frequency. Every time this switches, there's a little bit of a, a and pattern. That, that's that, the different that little minor that. variations in the battery bank. But when you look at that flat red line there, that takes it out every 10 seconds. So there's four and a half hours of every 10 seconds. And the blue and gray line are 
the output of the generator, which is pure, high quality, 120 volt AC power that's better than your wall power. And that's the output and the light bulbs. And you will not see one lick of voltage and current or variation in all that four and a half hours. Not a bit. That's so this so is no it's so truly novel to a switch infinitely infinite COP because it's closed loop. 